Hi there, I'm your guest host, DJ, and in the hot zone today is the wonderful, the beautiful, booked and busy actress, Karen Moore. Today, I will be chatting with her about her role in BET's number one hit show, The Oval, as well as her role in the CW series, Stargirl, and mental health awareness. It's a whole conversation, so be sure to stick around for it because you're in the hot zone. I'm not going. Yes, you are. You are the absolute worst. You ungrateful little bitch. Hey, Rin, thank you so much for joining me today. How are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So we're just going to get right into it. You play the first lady of the United States, uh, Victoria Franklin, on BET's number one rated show. It's currently airing right now, the second season. And congratulations on it being renewed for season three. How excited are you about that? It's very exciting. The Oval has been an amazing show. So I'm so excited that it's been received so well. Your character, Victoria Franklin, I have to say, she is one of the most vicious, villainous roles on television that you play. And I'm sure it was a challenge portraying that kind of character. But what, ins where did you get your inspirations from in bringing that role to life on screen? Well, I often tell people that, you know, we all know people who um, hurt people hurt people. You know, so we all have people like that in our lives or we've experienced people like that in our lives. So I've pulled some from my personal experience and some from, you know, old school dynasty, Dominique Devereaux, Diane Carroll, you know, the whole glamour of the evening soaps and Meryl Streep was a huge influence or she is a huge influence um, in everything she does. She smashes it. And so um, I pulled from her character in The Devil Wears Prada for that one <laughs> and some of Angelina Jolie from Maleficent so I've kind of I have a, a mashup of characters that I've kind of pulled from and some of my own personal experience and here we are with Victoria. Those are good inspirations to be pulling from and I know this character is so different from who you are in real life but did you find anything relatable about playing Victoria Franklin or anything at all whether it's personality fashion sense anything relatable to you personally? Well, you know, she's, she's a human being. So, you know, I had to humanize her first and understand that, you know, I, I really try my best not to judge anyone because people are who they are and they've had their experiences and that those experiences have brought them to the person that they are today. So I, I don't judge her anymore. And so in that regard, I can connect with her. Um, she's a human being. She has, she has flaws, she has fears, she has hope, she has dreams. And so in that regard, I can connect with her. Her fashion sense though, as the season goes on and even into next season, she is fierce, honey. So I would like to say that I connect with her on a fashion level as well. As I mentioned, BETZ Oval is ranked number one, such a huge hit. How has your life changed since becoming part of such a hit show? Um, it's it's really interesting because this is my this is my first lead role in a, a production that's been picked up. And so it's 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 surreal. I mean, that's the, the best way I can explain it. I uh, being recognized out in public and having my face, you know, and random places on, on billboards and on television has been something to get adjusted to. But I'm so glad, like I said earlier, that the audience has, re has received the show so well. Um, people, uh, the supporters are amazing. And I'm, support I'm, su I'm surprised by being approached all the time by people who just absolutely love Victoria. They love the show. And so not so much when I'm wearing my mask, but you know, just prior to, <laughs> just prior to COVID, I was recognized uh, quite frequently and that was something to get adjusted to, but it's been all love. I've been enjoying every moment of it. What was it like being on set with just the cast and the crew? Like when the cameras aren't rolling behind the scenes, what's the whole vibe like? Girl, we have fun. We have a lot of fun. Um, we, the Oval's cast and the crew, they're just a good group of people. 
in general. So, you know, we respect each other, we support each other and we have fun. And, you know, we went, we were one of the first productions to go back into filming during uh, COVID. So we had to quarantine at Camp Quarantine on Tyler Perry Studios for two and a half weeks together for season two and for season three. And so, you know, we had this camaraderie and it's, it's, it's a huge family. So I, I, couldn't, I couldn't imagine doing this with a better group of people. Tyler Perry, he is, obviously we know he's a genius. He always has something going on. And I know prior to this, you've been involved in maybe one or two of other of his projects. What was, what's it like working with Tyler Perry? What's the relationship like? The really, it's, it, <laughs> that's an interesting question. Um, you know, I learn a lot from him. You know, his work ethic is unmatched. Uh, I tease this past season, I, um, I came out of a scene and I, I went over to him. I said, hey, Tyler, how do you, how do you come up with this stuff? And he's like, well, how do you deliver it so well? I said, touche. And I just don't <laughs> walk away. <laughs> no, he's a lot of fun to work with. Um, he's a visionary. He's brilliant. He knows exactly what he wants. It's a fast paced environment. Uh, we, we, it's, it's an unorthodox way of shooting. I think it's more like, um, regular television soaps. I've never been on a soap, but I would liken it to that or to theater where you get kind of one take and you move on. So it's a really high energy, high, a fast paced environment, but we thrive in it and we have a good time. As you know, next month is mental health awareness month. And I know you've always been an advocate for mental health awareness and wellness. And of course, this past year has been so challenging for many of us on all angles from the political climate, social injustices, and of course, the pandemic, it has taken a toll on a lot of us mentally and emotionally. How have you personally coped with all that was going on and just continued to stay focused? You know, initially, I'll, I'll be honest, it was hard. It was really, really tough. And I think, you know, everybody kind of experienced that going into it. But um, once I, I realized, okay, this isn't going to last forever. And so let me just try to make the best of it. Of course, I am an advocate for, for mental health um, counseling. I have definitely been <laughs> in touch with my counselor on a regular basis, and I encourage everyone to do that. And I know that in the Black community, a lot of times there's a stigma attached to seeking um, help, for seeking you know, help from a mental health professional, and there's nothing wrong with it. As a matter of fact, it's healthy. Even if you feel that you're completely healthy, sometimes it's nice to have a sounding board. So, you know, just finding time for myself, making some me time, drawing a bath if I need to, having some quiet time, reading a book, doing yoga, whatever it is that calms me during the day, I make sure that I take some time out during every day to focus on myself. And I've learned that, um, Focusing on yourself and putting yourself first is not being selfish. You know, they say on the airplane, secure your mask before assisting others. You have to do that in life as well. So true. And like you said, within the Black community, it's, we're always taught to just kind of like be strong and, you know, just deal with our emotions eternally. And you're right, there isn't enough conversations being had within the Black community about mental health awareness. And it's important to seek help. So as an advocate, how do you use your platform to spread that awareness? Like what projects are you involved in to spread that? Uh, well, that's interesting you ask that. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was involved in a stage production and, um, <laughs> and it focused on mental health within the black female community. And how, you know, we, like you said, we're always taught to be strong and we're taught to, you know, just pray it away. And we, you know, we, we just put the best face forward and um, behind all of the masks that we tend to wear, you know, all of us are going through something. It might not be anything, you know, terrible, but we're all going through something and we just try to mask it for the world. And there's nothing wrong with saying, you know what, hey, I'm not okay. So um, it, was, it, was a, it was a great privilege to be involved with that project. Like I said, it was a few years ago. Um, and also I'm involved with Silence the Shame, which is an organization here in Atlanta. And it's, it's pretty much what it sounds like. It's, it's a, an advocacy, advocacy group that focuses on mental health awareness and education in the community and offering resources to people. You've been booked and busy, not with just the charitable projects, but also just the couple projects that you go on, have going on on screen. You're not only involved with The Oval, but also CW and DC Universe's show Stargirl. You play the role of Dr. Chapel. 
I wonder, I'm wondering if this was this productions kind of happening at the same time? Like, was there a crazy overlap between productions? How did you manage juggling them? <laughs> it's funny. For, for the first season of The Oval, um, I was in the process of filming Stargirl. And because I took the lead role on The Oval, I had to kind of step away from my role on Stargirl for a little while. And so there was overlap there. This season, for season three, we went into filming at the beginning of March. And I was in the process again of filming season two of Stargirl, but we only film, like I said, we have an unorthodox method of filming at Tyler Perry Studios. So it goes really quick. We were there for two and a half weeks. So I took a two and a half week hiatus from Stargirl and was able to jump right back into it the following week. So it is fast paced and it's crazy and it's kind of hard to keep up with everything, but it's so much fun. I'm loving it. I always say booked, busy, and blessed. That yes. is definitely blessed yes. <laughs> for sure. So tell me a little bit more about um, Stargirl's uh, character that you play, um, Dr. Chapel. What's that character like? <laughs> well, Dr. Chapel is the new, the new doctor in a small town uh, called Blue Valley, which is where Stargirl is based. And she is, like I said, it's a small town. So she's the, the, the doctor in the town. And she is the mother of a superhero. And the, my, my kid is Beth Chapel, and she also plays Dr. Midnight. So that's her super character. And it's been a blast playing her. The, the cast and crew is amazing. The showrunner, Jeff Johns, is such a joy to work with. Um, my my on-camera family there, it's, 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 it's <laughs> it's completely opposite from the oval, but you know, neither is better than the other. It's just different. It's a different environment. And um, we're, we're having a lot of fun with that as well. And season two will be coming up this coming July, I believe for Stargirl. We don't have an exact date for the release yet, but you'll see a lot more of Dr. Chapel in season two because I've had some more availability and their storyline has uh, evolved. Uh, the Chapel family storyline has evolved more for season two. Looking forward to seeing it. Okay, booked and busy, love it. And also, I have to say though, I'm, I'm, I don't know if you get this a lot, but you look like Erica Dixon from <laughs> Love and Hip Hop. <laughs> do you get that a lot? You know what? I, I, I do. I, but I didn't, I didn't get that until like I booked the Oval. It was weird. You know, I, I, people say, oh, well, you have a twin here. You have a twin here. You look like this person. You look like, but that's the first time, you know, and everyone is saying it on social media. So maybe one day we'll meet and maybe we can do like a, I don't know. I don't know if she's into the into the acting world, but maybe we can do something one day together. Oh, I am so here for that. That would be awesome. You guys are like a total doppelgangers. I love it. Both <laughs> beautiful, of course. Thank Have you. you? And speaking of love and hip hop, you also in earlier in your career, you also did some music. You had a solo album, and you were also a vocalist for several R and B groups. Are you or have you considered getting back into the music game at all? I've considered it not as, um, not seriously. I think more than anything, I'd like to do more musical theater. You know, once once the theater is open back up, I'd, I'd really like to get back into musical theater. Recording is something I enjoy, but now it's just more of a hobby. So I wouldn't mind if somebody wants me to sing backup, hey, call me, um, but I'm not interested <laughs> in being forefront on, on that scene anymore, no. And last but not least, you do have a birthday coming up this month, right? Yes. <laughs> Happy early birthday. Do you have any fun plans? I am I'm trying to get out of here, girl. Listen, I haven't been on vacation since before COVID. So I am really trying to take a vacation. I want to go to Hawaii and to the U U.S. Virgin Islands. So I'm working on that. And hopefully, you know, I can get that wrapped up by my birthday. Oh, I hear you on that. Everybody's trying to get away. Oh, that's going to be like a thing. Like flights are going to be booked and busy this year for sure. Yes. yes. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Karen. I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with me. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you, DJ. I really, really appreciate it. I love your energy and thank you for the birthday wish. I am so grateful. Of course. Of course. I hate you, you son of a bitch. Why? You brought your whore. Hi, I'm Karen Moore, and you're watching The Hot Zone.